isn't there anything we can do, don't you? No. The way I am now, I'm no sort of wife for you. But I'm strong enough to change. Perhaps. If your doll were taken away from you. This is A Doll's House by Henry Gibson, although a modernized version of it. The original play was written in 1879, based off of Ibsen's acquaintance, a woman by the name of Laura Keeler. Like Nora, the protagonist of A Doll's House, Keeler was involved in a forgery incident where she signed an illegal loan to save her husband from tuberculosis. Though Nora was ultimately able to escape her situation, Keeler was without question committed by her husband to an asylum. While living in Rome in 1879, Ibsen famously wrote that there are two kinds of moral laws, two kinds of conscience, one for men and one quite different for women. They don't understand each other, but in practical life, women are judged by masculine law as though she weren't a woman, but a man. In an outline he called Notes for a Modern Tragedy, critics have claimed that a doll's house is a continuation of his philosophy in which Ibsen uses Nora to depict the transformation from a female to a human being. For its time, A Doll's House was more than just avant-garde, it was shocking and controversial. The play openly rejected conventional morality of the time and sparked a frenzy amongst theatergoers in the media. Ibsen went on to publish other plays, such as Ghosts, but nothing was quite like the masterpiece that A Doll's House was. Even though Ibsen never intended for A Doll's House to become a political symbol, Ibsen's play became an emblem of the women's movement on its own accord. In a speech he made in 1898, Ibsen even went as far to say, I am not even quite clear as to just what this women's rights movement really is. To me, it has seemed a problem of humanity in general. As the female protagonist of the play, Nora is not only the vessel for its and social commentary, but is also the representative for all women of its time. In Nora's marriage, for example, though Nora and Torvald play the part of a happy and loving couple, their marriage is shallow and superficial. While Torvald showers Nora with his affection, she is not allowed to openly oppose him in any effective way. Thus, she is still restrained and limited to the role of a well-behaved wife. Likewise, Torvald embodies conventional masculinity and is expected to financially support the family at any cost. Despite Nora's love for Torvald, it is uncertain whether she would maintain their marriage if Torvald was unable to provide for her. In deceiving her husband, Nora is able to establish her own sense of autonomy and gain unique new experiences. As someone who lived a somewhat sheltered life, this moment is representative of Nora's first true breakthrough as an individual. Her innate desires to become her own person is seen through this one act of defiance. Though the fraud Nora committed has its repercussions, it is much more important to recognize the judgment and scrutiny she would be facing if her secret was revealed. She would be ostracized by society and possibly even abandoned by Torvald, her husband. At the end of the day, Nora's motives would render useless in arguing for her cause. Higher play, Nora struggles to upkeep her faux persona at the cost of suppressing her true desires. As her mask begins to crack, parts of her true identity shine through, as seen in the Tarantella scene. She is ultimately able to detach herself from a life dictated by Torvald in the final moments of the play. This is significant because it represents her development from a doll to a real person. Though some might view the story of A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen as a simple message of female empowerment, Ibsen's perception of feminism must be analyzed with factual context. The pivotal focus of the play is Nora's evolution and development as a character, which culminates at the climactic moment when she leaves Torvald. However, although Torvald may seem to be the antagonist at the end of the story, he is never actually the villain. In Torvald's eyes, he treats his wife well and keeps up a happy marriage. As superficial as it may seem, he plays his role to the best of his abilities and expects the same from Nora. These expectations are in no way formed out of Torvald's personal philosophies. Rather, he is just the byproduct of a toxic societal standard that often oppresses women into silently obeying their husband's command. In her final outburst, Nora realizes that her struggle is useless and turns away from Torvald. Without the self-realization, she was stuck hanging on to her desperate hope that Torvald would come to her rescue, but by leaving on her own agenda, she succeeds in her prophesied metamorphosis. Ibsen's point isn't that men are the root of societal evil. His point is that women face the brunt of an oppressive system fostered by inherently unjust traditions and cultural patterns. Nora's evolution comes out of her epiphany, not Torvald's defeat. There is no real victory in the story in the sense that nothing changed other than Nora's understanding of herself. 
Overall, this eloquently communicated commentary is why Henrik Ibsen's A Dollhouse remains so highly acclaimed as a work that candidly addresses society's flaws, specifically regarding the reality of misogyny and the prevalent lack of female autonomy in the 19th century.